Hello again everyone. Today what I'd like to do is show you how I make my version of a soda can stove. This is the finished product. The two main changes that I have over some of the basic soda can stoves out there are that I wrap a wick around the outside of the stove and I use this to light the stove instead of a priming pan. And then I also install a threaded rivet insert to make filling the can, uh, to filling the uh, stove a lot easier. Then we have a thumb screw, and the thumb screw closes up the stove for when you're actually using it. So, in order to get started, let me show you the items that you need in order to make this stove. First of all, you need a tool to install the threaded rivet nuts. I have threaded rivet nuts here. You'll see how you put those on in a minute. The ones that I'm using are 1024 threaded rivet nuts. You need a needle nose pliers, a couple of Q-tips. This is four feet of 1 16th inch fiberglass wick. I've got a couple of push pins, a lighter, a trauma shears, a pen for marking the can, some epox two-part epoxy, a 1964's drill bit and some painter's tape, two soda cans, and a drill. Well, let's get moving and I will show you how to make this. One of the things that's not required, but something that I use that comes in very handy, is I ha made a jig for marking the height of the soda cans. And accurately marking the cans is going to be real important, and making a nice smooth cut is going to be real important. So you'll see that jig again. Again, not necessary, but it's very handy to have. Next thing, once I've got the cans marked, I need to cut them to height. Once I've got it, a hole in the can, next thing I do is move down here and cut the can. Be careful when you're cutting the can because if you leave nicks in the edge of the can, you are going to split the can. You're going to split the can when you push press fit it over the top of your other half of the stove. There. Make sure that it's cleaned out. There's the one half. I would cut the second can, but for demonstration purposes, don't need to do that right now because I have a second bottom that was cut. Now, next thing that I'm going to want to do is drill the hole for my fitting. I do that with the 1964's drill. Kind of center it as best you can. I do this before I put the can together because if you do it afterwards, what's going to happen is you are going to drill through the bottom of your stove, which does not work well. Now my I thread the rivet knot onto the tool, put the rivet nut into here, and now I'm going to squeeze. You look in the bottom, you can see what's happening. It works just like a rivet, pop rivet, except it doesn't pop. Screw that, and there's the top of the can. Next thing I do is I'm going to have to put some bends in this bottom can so that I can fit it into the top. And I'm just going to press it. That can be probably some of the most frustrating part of this stove. Press fit it down. 
make sure you do it nice and even because if you don't get it even and it goes sideways you're gonna have some problems there I've got that now that's my filling port now I'm going to install the thumb screw so I don't lose it next thing that I want to do is punch my holes for that I'm going to use a push pin you don't have to be super precise I normally like to have about between 16 and 18 holes at even intervals if you really want to be precise you could drill this I have not found a lot of benefit to that as far as precision but if you want to you can you can also position the jets in different places if you want to you can position the jets on the sides of the can which gives you a larger flame pattern or you can do them on the top which gives you a smaller flame pattern this is going to be used with my canteen cup stove and so I just put them on the top okay there we go now the next thing that I'm gonna do is wrap the top of the stove with some painters tape in order to protect the holes wrap it around now if you noticed on my other stove what I did was I actually painted the stove black before I wrapped it but now you just take your epoxy spread some out and with the q-tip break off the tip I mix it Once you've got it mixed up, just spread it evenly along the side of the can. I don't want it real thick, but I want to get to coat the entire can. The stick really only goes so far. There's a point at which you have to use your fingers. You can use a glove for this if you want. I kind of like the control of just doing it by hand. See I've got the bottom of that stove coated now. And I am going to wrap the wick around the stove. Here. Get that to stick. And then wrap. Normally three or four turns is going to be plenty. Once I've got that wrapped, cut off the excess. And I'm going to push these together so that I get a nice even wick now I can take off the tape see the holes are protected and there is your stove you let this dry a little bit and that's a usable stove a couple of modifications that I made thank you for watching my videos hope you learned something as always hey take your kids camping have a great day everybody